all right guys hi everybody good day to you welcome back the uh the saga continues the bad idea saga the attempted resurrection after death saga on this uh 2000 f-150 this is the one i just put a radiator in uh the other day what had happened was was the uh <clears throat> the uh trans cooler inside of the radiator ruptured and it pumped a bunch of engine coolant into the transmission so i put a radiator in it to fix the problem uh, in lieu of trying to or in lieu of replacing the transmission or getting it rebuilt i'm just gonna flush the daylights out of it and we're gonna see if uh if i could bring this thing back to life or at least uh make it live a little bit longer so stay tuned because the conclusion of this video is going to be very interesting i don't know what's going to happen you don't know what's going to happen but we're gonna find out. Happening Z Hood. Yeah. Gravity. Great squeaky. Clunky squeaky. Yeah, it's uh, she's showing her age. We still don't know the mileage because the uh, odometer is still broken. We'll call it 400,000. Why not? Powering down. Just to kind of revisit here. Oh, that's a new cab. I put a new one on there. You can see all that nasty, crusty in there. That is transmission fluid. And we put a new radiator in it. I flushed it all out, the coolant side, with the garden hose. And it once, at one point, we pulled the pan down and checked for a bunch of debris and nasty stuff in the trans. Uh, we did indeed find some, but. Uh, due to cost constraints and uh, we decided we're just gonna go ahead and flush all this stuff out and not replace the transmission uh, By we I mean not me. I mean, I'm not gonna lie I'm okay with taking some risk every now and then but that one looked uh, it looked pretty far gone um, There are other videos uh, on that transmission. I think there's two other videos on this vehicle uh, one was me going and picking this thing up with the tow truck and then pulling the trans pan down and finding all the carnage and then calling throwing in the towel then the next video was changing my mind uh, after some persuasion and uh, we went ahead and proceeded with repairing it in hopes I can save the trans. So like I said, I put a radiator in there because that was the initial failure point and now I'm just going to flush the daylights out of this transmission and uh, we're going to ship it and we'll just find out how long it lasts. It's really all we can do because the, uh, the idea of putting a transmission in this is rather expensive and not cost effective for the vehicle. They're kind of already in it pretty deep because that's a, a newly installed engine and uh, We don't want to throw away a car with a newish engine. I think it's a junkyard motor, but it's been resealed It's been gone through its head, you know the plugs and the coil boots and the thermostat and all that good stuff replaced I think they put timing belts or chains timing chains in this also Regardless we're not focusing on that engine. We're focusing on what's behind it and we'll see when I get this line off, we're gonna see the nasty condition of that trans fluid. I don't think what it looked like on the dipstick really did it any justice. Yeah, there we go. It's that strawberry milkshakey looking nasty. See that? I even see clutch material in it. You know, see the black, that little black stuff? That's some of the clutch material. So let me go and fetch, uh, fetch my adapters for the fluid flush machine. We'll get this thing hooked up and we're gonna pump uh, probably 30 to 50 quarts through this thing to uh, get rid of all of this contaminated fluid and replace it with known good fluid. So stay tuned. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this. I've got uh, adapters that fit the Fords, or this particular Ford, and we're just gonna connect my machine adapters to the fittings, snug them up, connect the lines, and we put the fluid in the machine. Some of you guys have seen this before, but fluid goes in the machine, we start the engine and the transmission's pump will do all the uh, all the work for us. So let's click that guy on right there. Then we're gonna get a hold of this one here. Put some torque on that one. Click. Now that's kind of a tight squeeze down there, so I've got some 90 degree adapters. To clip onto these and then the, the lines on the machine will connect to the, the adapters. There we go. Point that one up and run the machine lines 
into our adapters here. There we go, there's one. And number two, clicks. Okay, moving on. We're gonna head over here in front of the machine. We're gonna open up the valve. This is going to uh, fill the bladder tank down below inside of the machine. And once that tank is full, we can reseal this thing off and then start the, start the process. Fingers crossed, let's see if it's gonna work. See, I'm reluctant to kind of give an opinion on it because I tend to say things and it causes them to occur. So I don't really want to go, ooh, it's not gonna work. Or also on occasion I can say things and the opposite of what I said uh, can occur. Therefore, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut and we're gonna let the car gods decide the fate of this truck. Okay, that one's done. Switch it out with the next one. This is some cheapo fluid. We're gonna do the first flush with the cheapo fluid and then I'll do another one with a uh, better fluid. Okie doke, so that was about 11 quarts I think. That's what I've got left of, the, of my cheapo stuff here. So we're gonna flush the 11 quarts first and then uh, we'll do the 16 quarts with the Primo fluid later. Uh, before we do that though, I am gonna install some cleaner into this transmission and we're gonna start the engine, let it run, and that cleaner is gonna circulate through the system and hopefully it'll break down uh, some of that uh, contaminated fluid and, uh, and help to extract it. This is a, a BG product, very high end Primo stuff, not cheap either, but I figure going through all this is the best, uh, is gonna give this thing the best chance to live, but we'll see. Okay, funnel time. Stick that down in there. Now I've also got a filter. Oh, that didn't come out. I've also got another filter. Um, I'm not gonna do the filter just yet. If in fact this thing does uh, show signs of life, then um, once we do all the flushes, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and pull that pan down and, uh, and change the filter. But we're gonna hold off on that until we know for certain. So that's our quick clean. We just dump that in and let it circulate, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever. And then we can begin, uh, begin the process. Show, let us go stopping the engine. Let's see here, oh, check the valves. Closed, 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 capped. Now we're ready. All right, Ford, let's do this. Restocking. Let's check for leaks. We have no leaks, this is good. We've got contaminated fluid flow. You see the milky strawberry looking color in there? That's due to the coolant contamination. That's not what we want to see. This is the old fluid that's circulating through the machine right now. That's going to go ahead and uh, become foggy pretty soon. It's going to look just like that. And then once we begin the process, we should start to see a color change occur where the new fluid is in good condition and the older fluid starts to uh, starts to clear up. And yeah, there's that fogginess again. Cloudiness, cloudy. So like I said, 10 minutes or so with that cleaner circulating through there, we'll go ahead and begin the process on the machine and uh, see how it turns out. Oh yeah, look at that, that's terrible. Nasty, that's a transmission killing nonsense right there. Okie dokes. An undisclosed amount of time has passed, and that cleaner's had ample uh, ample time, actually about 40 minutes, uh, to circulate through the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the process real easy. We flip it over to process purge, and it's gonna begin to do the fluid exchange. So what it's gonna do, as the pump pumps the fluid into the cooler, or through the unit into the cooler, it's gonna run into the machine. It is going to travel into the storage tank below, which uh, this tank contains uh, two vessels inside. There's like a diaphragm inside, and uh, one side is gonna be the uh, used old fluid. The other side is gonna be the new fluid. So as the old fluid pumps in, it's gonna push on that diaphragm, pressurizing the chamber with the new fluid. And it's gonna send that into the other line, and then through the cooler, and then into the transmission. We're gonna have to do that two or maybe even three times. So we'll see. So stand by, this will take about 10 minutes or so, and uh, I'll check back in when the process has finished. Uh, hey, look at that. We had a color change. It's still flowing though. We're not, uh, it's not complete yet. 
it's getting somewhere. What this is showing us is now what's moving into the vehicle is the new fluid uh, from the diaphragm in the tank down below. And uh, what is coming out is the old nasty fluid. You know, I've got to say, I have done more of these types of services here by myself than I've ever done ever working for somebody else. In fact, now that I look back on it, I've never done this type of service working for someone else. I've only done these here. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm risky. Or maybe I'm less inclined to pull the trigger on replacing transmissions. Who knows? Not certain. How's our temperature gauge is? Temp, uh, engine coolant temp is, that's in the middle. Okay, we're not overheating. Everything's looking good, all right. I was a little worried about the overheating possibility because all of that trans fluid was also flowing through the cooling system. Now, although I drained it out and then flushed it with some water and stuff like that, I was afraid that perhaps the uh, thermostat could have been affected or the rubber gaskets inside. All right, I'll give this some more time. I'll check back with you guys when we get a pressure rise over here. All right, we're coming up on, uh, well, we've got a pressure differential now. We've got 11, 12 PSI and 10 or so. So this thing's, uh, it's about complete. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down, disconnect it, and then refill the machine with uh, a 16 quarts of fluid, and I'm gonna do it one more time. Stand by. Uh, no cleaner in the second set, so we're going to do this rather quickly. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and empty the machine and go ahead and refill it with a uh, another round of fresh fluid. It's still nasty. We'll refill it with one more round of fresh fluid, and, uh, and that's that. It's either going to live or it's not. So I need to disconnect these lines in order to drain this machine. We just hook some air up to it and it pumps it right out into the, uh, the oil drain there. Real easy. We do need one straight adapter. Come here. Plug that guy in. Click. Okay, so the line's down inside of the oil drain. Let's go ahead and plug this guy in. Send some pressure. I'm gonna wanna grab that as quickly as possible so it can't fly out and cover me in nasty. Aha! There it goes. The nasty pink fluid. Swirl it around in there. Good, nice, like. Oh, yeah. I can smell that cleaner that's in solution with this fluid. It reeks. Stinky. But I guess that's also how you know it's good. You can dilute it in three or four gallons of fluid and it still smells. Makes sense. Uh-oh, it's starting to fill up and my tank is almost full. Oh! Bubbly. Okay, so the internal tank is now empty. Let's disconnect the uh, air supply. We don't need that. And we need to depressurize this unit. Let that thing bleed out. Crack open a valve. And while that thing's bleeding out, I'm going to go fetch uh, a box of the BG Primo fluid. And we're going to dump that into the machine and then process it one more time. All right, round two. Let's get this machine refilled my bag in the box it's not red wine so don't drink it and this is a 16 quart box there we go haha <laughs> Come on, machine, slowing me down. Having another one of those late nights. You guys have noticed that like 40% of my videos are after dark. I work a lot. I have things to do. Oop. I mean, granted, dark is, you know, six o'clock still. 
Okay, that's one bag in the box in the machine. So what we need to do is close our valve, close our valve, close our valve, put a lid on it, connect our hoses one more time to the system, to the vehicle. Let's click and click. Get on there. Ooh, get on there and stay on there. Did you see that? Could have been bad. All right, restart the engine, then we will restart the procedure again. <laughs> okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. What is wrong with this truck? That's uh, not a happy starter. Okay, it's a new one. Line pressure, come on up, let's see some flow again. Well, that's weird, look at this. We have more line pressure. Second time around, that's that's a new one. Yeah, I bet that pump is garbage. It's so junk. Well, anyway, we got line pressure. Let's start the procedure again. Let it ride, I'll be right back when this thing is done. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll see if it's gonna live. Oh, look at that. That cleared up fast. I guess now that we have line pressure, it's, uh, it's actually circulating. That last service took quite a while. Yeah, we're cranking now. Cool. You know, I'm kind of excited to see all that line pressure show up. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep and assume that this is actually gonna work. I don't know, but it might. Let's leave that right there for later. That's the additive package that goes in after the service. What we want to see is this thing clearing up. Uh, I realized earlier that this was the old fluid and this was the new fluid. Uh, I must have just swapped the lines around when, uh, when I hooked it back up the second time. So now this is the uh, new fluid and that's the old fluid. Um, you guys are gonna, you're gonna kill me for saying this. Same difference same difference so while we wait um, I want to share a Google review with you guys somebody googled uh, googled the shop here I don't know if they found it under um, Ray's Auto Clinic or Ray Man Ray's repairs in Bradenton but somebody googled it and they went in and left me a one-star review and they said that the one-star review was because they're here to tell everyone something about we're not celebrities which I, I know that I'm not a celebrity but the guy said that and uh, he also said something about how he's not gonna be using me for, to fix his cars in the future because my phone number wasn't listed on, on the Google or on the Google website or whatever, the Google review page for the, for the company here. And, and I actually responded to the guy and I was like, you didn't follow directions. You're supposed to contact me at, uh, via email uh, at my website, RainmanRaysRepairs.com and uh, there's a link for the email to get service done. And he didn't listen to that, or he didn't read that, or he just was trolling me and he found uh, found my um, my Google page or whatever and decided to leave me a one-star review. But he is, uh, he's the singular, singular anomaly, uh, like one out of literally 500 five-star reviews, and he gave me a one-star. And I was like, that's cute. You didn't even take me off of 100%. I, I had a fun time laughing about it. Uh, so yeah, I figured I'd share that story while we wait. Looks like the uh, process is moving along. Our creamy, nasty fluid is less creamier. I got a feeling we're gonna have to do one more service on this though. You know, and speaking of Google reviews, I, I don't think it's fair to go to somebody's Google page and leave them a negative review or a one star or whatever if you've never actually been a patron of that, uh, of that establishment, whether it be a a doctor or a donut shop or uh, or whoever i don't think it's very fair and reasonable to give people crappy reviews when you've never experienced their service just because you don't like them it's not fair i mean i don't personally i don't care but that could seriously damage somebody's reputation that's not cool hey look at that 45 pounds 30 pounds that's our pressure differential machine powering down our fluid's still kind of milky. We do need to do another service on this one, but uh, dude's got to pay for that one because I've already used 30 quarts of fluid. Let's go ahead and shut this down and I'm going to disconnect everything, hook the transmission line back up to the radiator and uh, we're going to go out and see if this thing's going to move under its own power. I'm, I'm a little concerned that it's not even going to move. 
It might not. So here's the deal on that can of additive. I'm, I'm changing my mind. I'm not gonna put that in until I get this fluid situation at a at 100%. Uh, like I said, we need to do probably one more exchange on this, but I gotta see if my guy wants to wants to buy another 16 quarts of fluid. Um, reason I'm not gonna install the additive is this is this fluid is no good, and I'm not gonna waste good expensive additive on contaminated transmission fluid. It just doesn't seem right. Because it's not gonna help. Oh, unclick. That's tight. How'd I do that? I have the incorrect leverage here. Ah, there we go. Okay, we'll spin my adapters back off. those aside and plug this guy back in tighten it down uh, no we cross-threaded didn't want to go in now it does kick okay we pull my uh, my funnel out of there we'll put our dip and stick back and I'm gonna back this out and see if it moves. And if it moves, maybe I'll drive it in the morning. It's it's getting a little dark, so I'm not gonna test drive it right now. That's silly. All right, closing in, Z Hood. Let's see if this thing's gonna move. It might not. Restarting the engine. Wipe that down. All right, moment of truth. Reverse gear. Break off. Hey, hey, it's backing up. Forward gear. Break off. Eh, it's a little laggy to go into gear, but it went. Okay, let's back it out some and I can't even see behind me. It's super dark out there. I know there's a parking space behind me somewhere. Okay, I'm not going to drive this right now. Um, it's dark outside, but uh, first thing in the morning, we'll finish this video. So don't go anywhere. Time will become seamless for you. Nighttime, powering down. Beow. Let me out of this thing. There we go. Okay, we're going to check back on that thing uh, during daylight hours. I am. Uh, I'm closing up and packing up and going home. It's uh, it's dark thirty, and I'm all done here. All right, it's the next day. It's daylight-ish, kind of cloudy. There's a storm of brewing over yonder. Look at that front coming through. See that? That's nice. Anyway, we are, uh, we're back on this F-150. We're gonna go ahead and do the test drive. We're gonna see if it's gonna shift. If it shifts, uh, that's good enough for them because if it will move and run and drive, and I, I guess they don't even care if it slips, it just needs to move. Starting the engine, so that's, uh, that's how it's gonna be. Show. Let's hit the road. This thing's junk. <laughs> Did you hear that trans pump start to scream at us when I put it in gear? Yeah, pumped is junk. But hey, if it uh, if it moves, we're good. So that's how it's gonna be. Let's see if it shifts. Hope so. Gate. Got it. <laughs> if I'm not back in 10 minutes, just come look for me. I didn't bring my phone. <laughs> All right, let's see. Well, we're not going that way. There's a train in the way. That's cool. They're gonna be there for a while. The rail yard for Tropicana, you know, the orange juice, uh, that's right over there around the corner. And they do have, uh, they're back there uh, changing up train cars and switching things around. Oh, this thing has a, Hold the right. Oh yeah, that tire's flat. Okay, well it shifted. That's enough for me, especially with that flat tire. We're going back. 
I'm not driving this thing too far. No, thank you. Hmm. Okay, we still have reverse. Hey, look. There's wife unit. Hi. She's going to get Arby's. And, oh, yeah, it slammed into gear there. Uh, well, it needs a transmission. But there's a uh, there's second gear. Third gear, okay, well, it's got some gears, so that's good enough for me, I guess. Well, let's park this thing and move on to something else. We're all done here. Parking's the truck. Yeah, I know, it's not a very thorough test drive, I know, but considering all things, I don't want to walk back in the rain, so it is what it is. Okay, pulling in, parking it, we're done here with this thing. I've, I've done all that I think I can do. Uh-oh, need to move over so the concrete guy can, can get out. I'm kind of full here. So, here's the plan. It, it works and it's i guess it's going to be good enough for now but it's going to need a transmission so we at least bought him some time and the truck can go back to work so the guy can make his money so i i guess that's a win uh yes this is kind of a stopgap solution for uh for the issue here go into forward gear please kind of a stopgap solution but uh that's what we wanted to do uh we not being me and uh that's what's uh, that's what's gonna happen. So that being said, I'm almost done here. Uh, I may do one more flush if the guy wants to uh, to, uh, to buy another uh, 16 quarts of fluid. But yeah, uh, you know it's it's a cost thing with this truck. So I probably won't do another one. We're just gonna let it ride as it is. So uh, that being said, as always, like thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoyed the other two additions to uh, the series on this particular truck. If uh, if you didn't catch the other two videos on this particular truck and would like to go back and take a look, just go down into this video's description and the two links at the top will take you back in time to part one and part two of this particular F-150. So, that being said, as always, again, thank you guys for watching and most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of furred transmission failure. Powering down. <coughs> Bright sunshiny day. It's raining outside. Come on, gate. Brr, that wind's getting cold. <laughs>